This is a game I came up with just for you. And I figured since we met Moving Improv, we could knock out a couple quick blackout scenes with this game. So I'll be playing oh Bernie Love, a radio DJ who gives advice kind of like Frasier. And I'll cue you up with a caller based on somebody you might have known in Milwaukee, along with a problem prompt, sort of a suggestion. Then okay. I'll bring you on the line and uh, you give Bernie the details and I'll give you some advice. Make sense? I love it. Makes sense. Excellent. Okay, we'll see how this goes. Welcome to Love at Night with Birdie Love, where we give you advice about any of the problems you have in your life. First off, we have Michael, a construction worker from Milwaukee, who says he has a problem with Pat Blue Ribbon. Michael, you're on the line with Bernie Loves. Hey, Bernie, thanks for uh, having me. Real happy to be here. Oh, boy, let me tell you what, I got some big issues here with Plaps Blue Ribbon, all right? That's what I hear. And I'm wondering if you can help me out in any way. If I'm being honest, I don't think it's great. I know we love it. I know it's a Blue Ribbon beer. Uh, and I know that people uh, really link it to Milwaukee and think it's amazing. But I think it's swill. And mm. I feel like I'm on the outs with my peer group. And they all want to drink that. Me, I'm a Miller Genuine Draft guy. I know that's not a popular choice. But I like that cold filtered. So am I. So am I, Michael. There we go, MGD Heavy, and that's my beer of choice. And I'm wondering, how can I break it to them in a way that I'm not going to lose them as friends? Well, some people might say that if you share this with your friends and they reject you as a friend, then they're not your real friends anyway. I'm not going to say that. What I'm going to okay. say is that sometimes to maintain a friendship, you need to trick your friends. So what I would do is I would take a syringe, drain out your can of Pat Blue Ribbon and then shoot it into your Miller High Life. And then that way you can open the can. It pops open just like a regular can. Your friends will know the difference. You won't have any awkward situations and you'll be able to continue these friendships well into your old age. Make sense, Michael? Bernie, Bernie makes perfect sense. And I'll tell you what, you've got a friend for life in me no matter what beer you drink. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. I will we'll talk to you later. And uh, I, I appreciate you being my friend. I consider all of my callers friends, especially when they're talking beer. All right, next up, we have uh, Kevin here, who is a bar owner who seems to have a problem with the Green Bay Packers. Kevin, you're on the line. What's your problem? Yeah, it's Kevin here. Thanks for taking my call. I'm gonna have to get off the line here pretty quickly because we're a third shift bar and uh, it's early, but we have people here working after third shift and they want to get drunk before they go to bed and have to do it all over again. Understandable. I'm having some trouble with the Green Bay Packers. They've been struggling this season. I mean, they had a nice win this past Sunday uh, over the Cowboys and that's great. We can't stand the Cowboys. Oh, fuck the Cowboys. <laughs> oh, sorry, I said they're on here. Bernie, this is your show, not mine. You can say whatever you want, however you want to say it. I'll pay the SCC fine. It's okay. Oh, you got money to burn, my friend. Look, I'm just saying here that when the Packers don't do well, people don't drink as much. Now, you think they drink more to drown their sorrows, and sometimes that's the case. But when people are in a festive mood, they tend to drink more, and people are not drinking nearly as much here. So, I guess I do have a problem with the Packers. But uh, I'm also curious to know how can I get people to plunk down some more of their hard earned cash uh, from over at Harley Davidson to uh, buy some more beer, even though the Packers are struggling? Well, I think a good way to do it would be you take a, a cardboard sign and you write out on it. Every beer you buy supports the Packers at training camp. And then that way people see, I'll buy the beer and the Packers will get a little extra training before next Sunday's game. It doesn't have to be true, mind. You just have to tell them this. And by uh -huh. next Sunday, it'll be a constant cycle. The Packers keep losing. Oh, they need more training, buy more beer. I think it'll, it'll do rough for you. I don't see any legal repercussions for you at all. Yeah, that feels foolproof. That feels foolproof. I mean, buy beer and they get more training is what you're saying. They somehow get more training as a result of this. That's what you're, that's what the, uh, the idea is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? The beer funds their additional training. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's a, it's a, it's a public account that, you know, the beer money goes uh -huh. into and then the Packers take it out. 
yes, we are a publicly owned team. The Packers are publicly owned. So this feeds into that idea. I completely understand that. Now, do these millionaires need more money from us? I'm not sure that they do. But I do like the idea that now we have even more ownership of a team that we already own. It feels it gives us even more connection to this team that we love so much. Bernie, honestly, this is a great idea and I love it. I'm going to start pushing this on our patrons at the bar. And I think it's going to go over like gangbusters. Bernie, thanks once again. I love your show. It's always oh, the thank best you, advice. Kevin. And I'll tell you what, you've got a voice like an angel. You've got a voice like an angel. But a lot of people tell me I have a voice like an ashtray, but I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> but I thank you very much, Kevin. And uh, last up here, uh, we have Patrick, who's a professional bowler who seems to have some sort of problem with Arthur Fonzarelli, the character Fonzie from Happy Days. Uh, aren't there, or Patrick, you're on the line. Oh, yeah. Hey, thanks for having me there, Bernie. Much appreciated. Uh, I got a big problem with the old Fonz, okay? Oh, well, I got to hear about this. Yeah, yeah, you do. You do. Listen up here. People, they're not flocking to the bowling alley like they used to, okay? I'm a good bowler. Heck, I just bowled a 300 last month, and I'm telling you what, it ain't my first one. But the people, they don't want to come to the bowling alley to watch me play, to watch me roll, okay? Instead, what they're doing is they're doing one of two things. They're either watching old reruns of Happy Days, which took place in Milwaukee, or they're heading down to the Milwaukee River, and they're taking pictures with the bronze fawns. In Milwaukee, we got something called the bronze fawns. It's a short statue, about as tall as actual Arthur Fonzarelli was, but he's cast out of bronze. But life-size. Life-size, yeah. You'd think it'd be a little bit bigger, a little bit more, you know, grand, but it's not, but it's still cool to see. And you get to take your picture uh, with, put your arm around him. He's got his leather jacket on. He's got his blue jeans on. He's giving the thumbs up. He's got the slick back hair. He looks great. And I'll tell you what, the bowling alleys, they're empty, Bernie. They're empty. And I'm hoping maybe you can give me some reason to get them back. I'm, this is a similar problem to the bar issue that I'm talking about earlier, I realized. We just, there's no one at the bowling alley now. They're all down at the bronze fawns down by the river. Well, uh, Patrick, I, I think you're in luck here because I've heard yeah. through the grapevine, through my connection out there in crazy town, Los Angeles, that mm -hmm. Henry Winkler is about to wrap up shooting on Barry at, and he's going to be free. So I think what you do, you reach out to Henry's people, you bring him to the bowling alley and you put him up behind the bar where he can serve all the patrons. Who wants to go see a statue of Henry Winkler 30 years ago when you can go drink with Henry Winkler right now? Bernie, this is unbelievable. I got to say, I love this idea. And I'm going to get Henry Winkler over to the bowling alley, Maple Lanes, and we're going to have a great time. And then we're going to switch them over to Landmark Lanes where they have three bars in the basement. It's been there since I've been in college. you got to go check it out. It's right by Bonchura on North Avenue. If you're ever in Milwaukee, go to Landmark Lanes. Is it a great looking place? No. But it's also right next to the Oriental Theater, which is a classic looking movie theater. You got to go check that out if you're ever in Milwaukee. Go see a movie there. It is ornate and beautiful. And Henry Winkler is going to love seeing a matinee there. Thanks, Bernie. Thank you, Patrick. And really interesting that you uh, gave some information about the town we both live in right there at the end of the call. It's almost like you were on a podcast about that town. Anyway, that does it for Love at Night with Bernie Love. I want you to call in next week with all of your problems. Send your name Milwaukee, please. Thank you very much. This is Bernie Love.